This is Sir Lumbington, my region-locked ultimate Iron Man. Once a man of comfort and relaxation, he's been suddenly thrust into a life of adventure. With access only to the area from the Lumbridge to Remington, he'll have to get creative if he's going to take on the toughest challenges offered here, including defeating the Calphite Queen. After becoming the hero of Lumbridge and finding his way home, it's time for the next chapter of Sir Lumbington's journey. Welcome back. Last time we explored the newly unlocked areas of Remington and Port Sarim. We got set up with a cash stack and teleport jewelry to help get around the area. Let's get right into the video this time. No bits or drawn out monologues. Nope. Sure that won't happen at any point during the video. Ha <laughs> ha. I'll just give you a quick reminder that our goal is to unlock Entrana for the account by reaching the requirements for Lost City. 31 crafting and 36 woodcutting. I also want to do a quest which unlocks an entire skill for me, but more on that in a sec. So last video I got access to silver jewelry. I wanted to make a tiara so I could turn this water talisman into a water tiara, get a little bit of crafting XP. Tiaras require 23 crafting, and since crafting is one of my main goals right now anyway, I decided to craft holy symbols all the way there. I also have a bigger plan for crafting that requires level 26, so this will help get me most of the way there. Three crafting tiaras and sapphire bracelets, and that means that it is time to craft some tiaras. Sadly, I went to check my farming, and I guess I decided to kill a chicken for some reason, and my video froze. This is the last frame of footage I have before actually going to make the water tiara. Alrighty, I just assembled the components for a attack potion here to get me another herb lore level. Level 5. We can now clean Marantil. Very nice. That will come in handy. And I think I'm going to take two seconds and just use this attack potion to do a little bit of melee training between what I'm up to. Ooh, hello. Let's take a look. It's in a book. Reading Clue Scroll. Alright, it's a Reldo step. We could very potentially do this. No. The 5 billion trees at Draenor Manor apparently lags my recorder, but also no. 1 in 3 chance of completing here. Do we get lucky? Yes, we do. Let's go. But can we actually get the next step? Nope. No, 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 we cannot. Alright, before I get up to any other misguided shenanigans, there's something I want to do. It's time to unlock a skill. Oh man, I can't believe I botched another clue scroll. It's just a stupid little piece of paper. You know what? I hate paper. I hate paper so much. Curse you, paper! Wait, what's this? Keen fighters sought to deal with troublesome monster? That's right, it's time to do Poor Sign of Interest. This quest is the intro to Slayer and can be completed entirely within my area. To start this off, we're gonna need to buy back the old bone crossbow and pick up a rope. Alright, the trusty bone crossbow is back. So we are going to get this started. This should be a fun little quest and hopefully not too challenging of a fight. I'm a little nervous, but that is how I am in this game. Good day, Sarah. So what the hell happened? Very sad. That's XP loss. All right, crossroads north of Draenor. Somewhere to start. I said we head there. Wow. I'm about to investigate a carrot. It has been slightly gnawed on. Seems like a healthy fellow. And, uh, a strange hole. Seems perfectly normal and safe to go down. This is the, uh, Forsaken Carrot Cave. Um, that's Jagex humor for you. Ooh, a bronze scimitar. That might be useful. Hmm, if I click this guy, is he gonna attack me? Probably. No, it's fresh. It's a fresh skeleton. Ooh, who's that? This dude is really fucking around. That's what you get, idiot. Well, I'll be out of here now. Bruh. Rest in peace, Lumbington. What? What happened? Where am I? Drawers, did you save me? Look at that face. What is she wearing? Is that a, is that a binding necklace? Is she doing some, la some lava runes? We're gonna take down this Saurog, and we're gonna do it with exactly this amount of food, because I don't care. All right, here we go. This is about to be the most uh, intense battle of uh, Lumbington's account history. Let's do this. Yeah! 
Cut the foot. Cut the foot. Yeah. Is it just me or, or is this icon like really big? That seems like a large icon. I got your foot right here. Ooh, 5k. Okay, that's not why I did this quest, but that's actually really good. Let's go let Spria know that we just made bank and that Sarah hates her. She keeps those logs stocked. You are giving me 30 Slayer reward points. That is so much more relevant than you could even begin to fathom. Quest complete. 1k Slayer XP, 30 Slayer points, and we get the goggles. This is absolutely huge. We will get nine Slayer. So let's take a moment here and talk about Slayer. Slayer. Slayer is the troubled child of region locked accounts. Every other skill I have a viable method to train all the way to 99 if I wanted to. Slayer, I don't have that option. Interestingly though, I do have some options. I actually have access to not just one, but two Slayer Masters in my area. I did the math, and based on having level 9 Slayer, my chance of getting a task that's within my area from Spria is approximately 58.8%. Not the worst odds, to be honest. However, there's a better option. Cheldar. Cheldar, Keldar, however you say it, I'm gonna call her Cheldar. Cheldar is the Fairy Slayer Master in Xenaris. Obviously, I don't have access to her yet, but that doesn't matter because she has the requirement of level 70 combat to even get a task from her. Now, why would I want to wait that long to get a Slayer task? Well, you see, here's something super interesting. Almost all of Cheldar's tasks have some sort of requirement, either a quest, a Slayer level, or a higher combat level. This means that if I get a task from her right when I hit level 70 combat, I'll actually have a 51% chance of getting a task that I can do. And if I lamp to 10 Slayer, it goes up to around 60% chance that I can get a task that's within my area. On top of that, there's only two tasks in this scenario that I could get from her that I couldn't do. Trolls and Fire Giants. Now you might be thinking, those are pretty similar odds, why wait for Cheldar? Well, another reason that Cheldar is better is that her tasks tend to be worth significantly more Slayer XP than Spria. This means that one doable Cheldar task would be the same XP as getting 5-10 to 10 doable Spria tasks. This little monologue has gone on long enough, so I'm gonna save why I want to do Slayer for another time. Suffice to say now that if I want to do Slayer, I'll need to hit 70 combat and have some good RNG. Good RNG, you say? I can help with that. Whoa, is that you again, narrator? Huh? No, what? No, I'm, I'm right here. I'm like God or fate or whatever. And you're going to give me good RNG? Maybe if you ask nicely. Can I call you RNG Jesus? No. Okay, RNG Jesus. Stop calling me that. Look, do you want the good RNG or not? Okay, okay, I do. All right, well, just be careful what you wish for. That was weird. That actually made me think of one more thing about Slayer. Basically, I just figured this whole Cheldor thing out. Originally, I was planning on getting an early Slayer task from Spria. That's why I never got 5 defense for these steel plate legs. The idea was that the lower my combat level, the better chance of getting a task in my area. But now that I have a new plan, that doesn't matter anymore, so let's go get 5 defense and I can free up an inventory spot. Level 2 defense. 5 defense on the screen. Steel plate legs going on the body. Finally. Steel plate legs. Very nice. Look at this jute stack, 229, that's a lot. I actually think that this may just be my final jute harvest. Let me do some quick calculations. All right, I actually can, in fact, stop farming these jutes. Um, excited to get to use those up pretty soon. I'll show you guys my sick method someday soon. All right, here I went back to the hamstorms to, uh, uh, Honestly, I don't know why I went back down here, but it paid off, so just check this out. Trying something new and keeping some of my excess food on the ground. Apparently, this room isn't locked. And these are steel key chests? Oh my god. How did I not know that? That makes this so much- Oh, that's so good. Oh, look at that. I just said steel keys are the best. Three steel keys. Let's go. Look at all these steel keys. I don't understand. Literally got straight steel keys. Hey, clue scroll. Let's take a look. Can we do it? Yes. Oh. Oh, sh Wait. Yeah. We can. Oh, let's go. Yes. Iron chain body. Is there anywhere I can get an iron chain body? Why did I go this way? Whoa, what the hell? I can actually get an iron chain body very easily by killing cave goblins <laughs> i can kill cave goblin guards and guard parentheses cave goblin all right i have bad news with the clue 
The longbow is not sold by the uh, archery shop that I have, so that's a little rough. We could craft our own longbow, but that would require us to get flax from a beekeeper rain event, which who knows when that'll happen. A few minutes later. <gasps> oh my god, wait, this could be it. Wait, this could actually be it. If he drops me flax right now, this is about to be the cheese of the century. Please, please, please be flax. Please. Yes! What? No way! Oh my god, are you kidding me? That's so goddamn awesome. No less than, what, 10 minutes after getting this clue scroll? The chance of that happening is so ridiculously low. I guess RNG just wasn't kidding about the RNG. I was gonna struggle so hard to find a longbow. I was literally about to say that I need to go do beginner clue caskets to try to get a longbow. Okay, I took a sec to cool off and kill some men, and it got me thinking. My next major move is going to Entrana. Now, getting onto Entrana as an ultimate Iron Man is tricky. If you don't know, Entrana is an island where you're not allowed to bring any combat gear except runes. The way I see it, I have three options for going to Entrana. The first is just dropping my stuff on the ground and hoping no one takes it. This is okay for quick trips, but it has a lot of risk. The second is the hardest, but the best, which is getting rid of all my combat gear. I'll be able to freely move to and from Entrana, but this gets harder the longer the account progresses. Lastly, there's death piling. As an ultimate Iron Man, I can die and my items will safely stay on the ground for up to an hour. This is a great option for the future, but when I go to Entrana for the first time, I want to explore the island without a timer. So I'll be going with option two, getting rid of all of my combat gear. That means that if I make a longbow now, I'll have to get rid of it pretty soon after. Since flax is a limited resource, I started to wonder if there's a way I can only make one longbow. And the answer is yes. You see, Entrana has some planks that spawn on it, which are going to allow me to train construction and allow me to build a stash unit where I can store my longbow. I think this is a sign that I should prioritize getting to Entrana next. So here's my Entrana ready checklist. 36 wood cutting, 31 crafting, 39 mage for crumble undead, and 20 attack. This is so I can get rid of my steel longsword as I'll unlock a new best in slot melee weapon at 20 attack. I'll start with this now since I'm already here. Sixteen attack. Seventeen attack. Eighteen attack. Nineteen. Oh, there's twenty attack. We can wield mithril weaponry, and that means that we can ditch this awesome steel longsword we've been using. Yeah, the fact that we got this from a clue, actually, I feel like this uh, sped up my training pretty considerably. The steel longsword goes for 200 GP. Thank you very much, steel longsword. Moving on to mage, let's get that to 39 in my favorite froggy safe spot. Let's go with a thousand casts. We'll just see where that, that takes me, so... Oops. Whoa, that shit is huge on the ground. What the hell? Look at that. That's literally like a gigantic cardboard box. Okay. We have 1,000 casts of Fire Strike. And of course, we're gonna take this back to the big frogs in the basement here. Yeah, their drops are just so useful to me. There's no good reason to not. Let the frog annihilation begin. Bada bing bada 32. 30 hit points. 33 magic. 34 magic. 35 magic. 36 mage. Big 37 magic coming in. We can teleport to Falador. Unfortunately, I'm banned from Falador. 38 magic. And with that, we're 400 total level. Let's go. All right, we're actually stacking these water talismans up. These are going to make some nice, quick rune crafting training after we're done here. And looky there. 39 magic. Let's go. We can now cast Crumble Undead, which was our goal for completing Lost City nice and easily. And almost, almost exactly the right amount of runes. Wow, that was shockingly close to the right amount of runes. Here we got three water talismans for some rune crafting XP, 100 nature runes, and 19 cosmics. This is such a great little grind. I love, I love killing these frogs. I don't know, something about it is just really satisfying. We're gonna pick up a tiara mold, and I think that this is gonna be our method from 23 to 26 crafting. And 26 crafting is the goal for me right now. Obviously, 26 crafting is not the goal level, but you'll see what level 26 crafting gets us in a moment. If you've already figured it out, it's not that cool, but I think it's funny. All right, let's make some of these into water tiaras for level two rune crafting. All 
right, first inventory. Let's see the XP come in. Very nice. 24 crafting. All right, we're going to use up this ring of returning. Free up another inventory space. Feels good every time I free up a space. 25 crafting. We are so close to my goal of 26. We can make pot lids, jade necklaces, necklaces of passage. Yeah, we can use that to get to the wizard's tower. That's huge. 25 crafting. I forgot that, that was a good level. 26 crafting. It's time for the big reveal. You're never gonna expect this unless you figured this out, which I hope that some people have. But uh, this is now about to explain one of the grinds I've been doing for more than half of this account's life. I can now craft drift nets. Drift nets, that's right. So drift nets are created by using two jute fibers on a loom. Shockingly, I have access to a loom, so I'll be unnoting my jutes, crafting them on the loom, and dropping them and running back to the bank. Actually, it should be a pretty quick method for crafting training, which I'm really excited about. This was one of the, the grinds that was the epitome of this account to me. So I'm finally, finally gonna get to do it. And I'm extremely excited about that. Very first inventory of jutes. Let's do this. I actually have no idea if this is gonna work. I, I've just kind of been operating on the assumption that it will. I'm so excited. This is so dumb. Make these drift nets. Yes, yes. Oh, it's so good. The XP is so, it's so fast. I figured that these would save me some time right now. And I was right. This is going to be a lot faster than pretty much any method. It's not every day you see seven drift nets sitting on the ground. Second inventory brings us to 27 crafting. Cut emeralds, emerald rings, and opal amulets. I think that's amulets of bounty? Those are actually kind of useful. Look at this animation. How many people have even seen this weird like rope pulling animation in this game? 28 crafting. We can craft hard leather armor. Hey, 29 crafting. There we go, 30 crafting. We are one level off. Camo top again. I'm gonna have to get rid of this leather body in a sec anyway. It's always easy to get back. We're just gonna get rid of this shirt. We'll wear the camo top because we may as well be fashionable while we're on Entrana. Okay, I just dropped all of my nets in the same place for the first time and I just noticed that this is worth 15K. I wonder if they're hard to get or something. I, I don't even know what they're for, to be honest. All right, the final inventory. 31 crafting. Off of my favorite method of all time, the jute fibers, we can craft emerald amulets and we can cut a Draymon branch into a Draymon staff. That was so satisfying. Um, looks like now it is time to work on wood cutting. So let's go ahead and just pick up an axe from Bob. We got the steel axe. Very nice. We're actually already 12 wood cutting, which is pretty good because we're pretty close to oaks, which are just so much better. 13, 14, 15 wood cutting. Finally, we can get some nice AFK action going here. Just to be efficient, I want to keep my fletching up while I do wood cutting, and I have an idea to help with that, but it's going to make me talk about something I've been holding off on. Obviously, I can buy these feathers from the fishing shop to attach my arrow shafts, but did you know there's also a shop that sells arrow tips in my area? Well, it's not exactly in my area, but it counts. You see, by unlocking Port Srim, I've unlocked access to the Void Knight Outpost and Pest Control. To me, this is perfectly well within my restriction as this is the approved way to get to Pest Control. It's basically the same as a cave or any other mini game that's within an area restriction. I think this is a great option for this account to have access to as it's just lots more to do and a really cool gear upgrade option. But aside from that, it has this bizarre little range shop. And look what they sell. Look at all this stuff. Addy arrow tips, rune arrow tips. I can actually get consistent rune arrows. And right now we can buy these super inexpensive bronze arrow tips and make bronze arrows, which is really cool. I'll have to hop a little bit. All right, screwed. I'm going to buy the, the iron arrow tips just for that training. All right, this purchase should get us there. We now have enough bronze arrow tips to uh, work with this stack of headless arrows. So that's pretty good. That did take a lot longer than I was expecting, to be honest. What the, what the fuck? Are you kidding? 15 wood cutting. I have under 3K wood cutting XP and I have the pet. What? What the fuck? <laughs> Z
So, uh, you like that RNG? RNGesus? Did you do this? Yep. And as long as you keep that little guy around, I'll keep it up. Wow, and I, I thought you'd use your magic up on the flax. <laughs> nope. Well, enjoy and don't go do anything dangerous. Wait, what? Oh, you know, I just wouldn't want you to die and lose this little guy. He's special. Oh, and I hope you weren't thinking of death piling, you know, to visit in Trana or whatever. Hope that doesn't mess with your plan. Can't I just make a menagerie and put him in there? Oh, yeah, of course. But you'll need oak planks for that, which you can get from Hunter. So you're telling me I need to keep this beaver safe until I lamp all the way to 17 Hunter? Yep, that should be hard, right? Okay, bye! Wait, I, 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 I... Well, I guess this beaver is my hardcore status now. I at least have to give him a name. I'll call him... Job. Yeah, Job. Jobus for short. That feels like a good beaver name. And I guess I have a new quest now. Don't die until I lamp all the way to 17 Hunter and unlock the ability to make a menagerie in my house. As if I didn't have enough quests already. Also, this episode has gone on long enough. There's way too many bits. Let's use our new beaver powers to skip to 20 woodcutting. Nice. Uh, how about skip to 30 woodcutting? <laughs> Man, having a beaver is awesome. And it is time to move on from this location and uh, get my willow chopping on. Let's do this. Hey, that's a medium task. Very nice. What? What? What the? I almost missed this elite clue nest. What the hell? Of course, there's a ridiculously low chance that, that I can do anything with this, but you never know. Let's find out. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> what? Aren't Jesus, what's going on? Hey, man, that wasn't me this time. That's just weird. I guess we just do this. I... I mean, sure, why not? There's no risk of this, right? This, let's just talk to this guy. Why on earth am I legitimately able to have done a elite clue step? That's just so ridiculous. I don't even, honestly, I don't even want to <laughs> go check if this is another step I can do. Yeah, okay, uh, that's a no, but still, like, what? That is ridiculous. That is truly... Truly ridiculous. I'm actually gonna go chop down these willows here. I always thought this little like willow pond was like just really picturesque. So this is gonna be my new spot. I just love this place. Like, come on, the ducks. We got some bull rushes, whatever that means. And we've got 32 wood cutting. Well, that's exciting. Hey, there it is. 36 wood cutting. We can now chop the Draymond tree, and I was paying so little attention that I missed a bird's nest, but that means that our requirements are now fulfilled, and uh, we can actually go to Entrana now. All right, I think it's time. I think it is just time to shed all of our combat gear that the monks of Entrana are against and uh, go there for the very first time. This is, <laughs> this is awesome. Let's do it. Goodbye. Thank you, Steel Plate Legs. You've been awesome. All right. I'm ready. Next episode, we're taking the boat to Entrana. Got a whole new area to explore. This has been a genuinely insane episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you made it all the way here to the end, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. It really does help, and I appreciate every single comment I get. Anyway, who knows if getting a pet will be a good thing or a bad thing, but all I know is I'm excited for the future, and I hope you are too. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, bye bye